I wanted her to do a good job. And honestly, I just don't think she has. I think she's done a terrible job. Of being a Democratic Speaker of the House, I mean, I don't know. What did you expect? <laughs> well, I mean, when they took over in, 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 in the midterm elections, I expected to see something dramatic that would tell the world that we had put down the crack pipe. And that was important to me, and I think it was important to a lot of people to, to have some sort of immediate sense that, you know, be, before those last two years were over and we wrecked the country some more, that we were going to put the fucking brakes on. And that did not happen. And the very first, in fact, the very first thing that happened practically after she became House Speaker was her telling us that that was not going to happen. And that was, that was actually, I, I know this is really late for me, you know, being in like my mid-40s to figure this shit out, but that was when I really started to doubt whether our system was ever going to be able to right itself. Um... I started to, to really entertain the notion that institutionally the United States cannot function. What's the alternative? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 say, I say that, but I... I, I mean, I have... Uh, friends who I respect on, on YouTube who talk about anarchy, but my biggest problem actually with anarchy is I don't see a way to get there. I absolutely don't see a way to get there. I mean, I think there, there are lots of stages between where we are and, and anarchy. I, I think we'll have to break what the big systems we have into smaller systems and you know this is just the general um, way that I am on my channel I mean I think that most of the problems of the world can be solved by breaking things down into smaller and smaller pieces getting more and more accountable structures um, I think size, to a large extent, is the problem. I think countries get too big, religions get too big, corporations get too big, and they just become graveyards for accountability. So how do we get to, to a better system? Well, <clears throat> I think we start breaking the system we have. We start taking the first thing, the very first thing that I think is the very first priority is decentralizing the power of this country. It's the most powerful country in the world. It's totally out of control. The only thing I think that, that the, well, the first thing that towards progress in terms of stopping that is decentralization, which I think will make it harder for the country to do harm. And mostly, that's all I'm about right now. I'm trying to, I'm not even really thinking positively. I'm thinking about minimizing harm, slowing the damage that we're doing to society and to the planet by... Well, that's not a bad start. By putting, by putting the brakes on and breaking things into smaller pieces that are easier to control, easier for individual people to control that they feel like they have a part of, they have a voice that, that does something. My only problem with kind of doing that on a local level right now is that I think the effects of the highly centralized federal government are so toxic that it eats up most of the progress that you can make on the local level. Yes, you can make tangible changes on the local level, and I, I, I certainly wouldn't want to discourage anybody from getting involved in local politics, but 
you have this enormous drain on local politics, which is the federal government. See, I actually think that there's an immense amount of power for change in, in local politics that the central government can't affect too much. The problem is that most people don't even know who is involved in local politics. They don't know their state senate or their mayor or, or the people on their city council because the media is centralized and on that, on that field of, uh, you know, on, on the television screen, okay, the people in your local city council are not characters who are going to show up on that television show, okay? And, and I think that if people paid more attention to local politics and even ran as candidates or fielded their own candidates and, and tried to make a difference on that level, they'd see just how much power there is in local politics. Because you can do things like raising the minimum wage. I mean, you know, if you raise the minimum wage in your town, there's a huge social difference right there on its own without accomplishing anything else, right? Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of the central idea behind uh, uh, this project that I'm trying to put together that uh, now that I've mentioned it, I will put a link to and not go into too much more detail about. But I think, like I said, I don't want to discourage that. I think that's powerful, and I think you're right. I think you can make a lot of tangible difference in people's lives um, by volunteering and by getting involved in local government. I mean, both of those things are ways in which you can have a tangible effect on other people's lives. My only concern is that I think the federal government being so out of control is... I think it's worth devoting some effort to trying to to a certain extent, bring down the federal government um, and and get to get some of that power. Oh man, we're all going to Guantanamo. <laughs> and get that power back to the states. I mean, you see some of that right now in terms of states sending like legal opinions, etc., to uh, the federal government, saying we're going to be more serious about policing the boundaries between what's yours and what's ours and I, I tend to view that as a very very healthy um, development I think that this is the kind of thing that will that, that could eventually bring accountability back because you get power away from the federal government you get it back to the states the states are probably going to further balkanize their power a little bit I mean as, as Local communities, there are two forces. I think you decrease your support of the federal government to what extent, whatever extent possible. You'd be highly critical of the federal government to try to get people to question whether one rule for everybody is a good idea, or whether we should, you know, be more serious about tolerating diversity in a realistic sense, not just, you know. I'm not going to kill you just because you're black to I think uh, I'm going to actually tolerate completely opposing points of view um, and try to find a way to live in peace with them. Yeah, um, and without getting into too much detail to try to save it for another episode, um, I do think that I mean, the, the Constitution pretty clearly defines the role of the central government. It actually lists basically what powers it has and what powers it doesn't with just a little bit of wiggle room with the elastic clause. Um, but then, you know, later on, due to uh, legislation and court decisions or lack of court decisions, uh, that power has been expanded into other areas, which in some cases is appropriate and in other cases is not. But 
which should be done through constitutional amendment rather than just through uh, kind of iffy court decisions in some cases. Right, or a regulatory fiat. Right. But I think tying all this stuff back to torture, I, I think it's kind of... Uh, I think once again, with torture, you have the, the problem of, you know, accountability. And this becomes a problem that relates to society in several different ways. You know, you have the tendencies of society to, to want to try to avoid things that make them feel bad about themselves. You know, you, you, that's just a, a natural human tendency. And the, the thing that goes along with that, in the sense that, Anything that gets you out of those feelings of discomfort is something that's going to have some kind of instant cachet with you. You're going to want to believe that.